What you're seeing on the screen right now wasn't built, it evolved. This is one generation of a living organism running inside of Minecraft. This entire structure is actually a 3D cellular automaton that I built inside of the Minecraft source code. But this automaton is not static, in fact it evolves over generations. It takes on new shapes and forms, defined only by the rules that govern it. It behaves deterministically but unpredictably, where one small change in the starting conditions can completely change the outcome. With three dimensions at play and 26 neighbors per block instead of eight, even simple patterns can explode into crazy complex behavior. These patterns weren't designed by me, they emerged as a byproduct of the rules of life. The original idea for this video came from a number of comments I received asking me to make my last Conway's game of life in 3D. At first I was hesitant because you can't find a lot of sources online describing what a 3D Conway's game of life could be like. However, this all changed when I discovered the paper, Candidates for the Game of Life in Three Dimensions, written by Carter Bays in... 1987? Okay, so it's possible I'm a little behind the science on all of this, but I'm sure Carter Bays wasn't worrying about how it would be made in Minecraft when he published this paper. The paper in question describes a number of possible rules for a 3D game of life. It also contains explanations of how changing the bounds of these rules can have interesting or even explosive effects. In the paper, he categorizes different rule sets by four numbers. The first two numbers specify the range of neighbor counts that allow a cell to stay alive. The second two numbers represent the range of neighbor counts that allow a dead cell to reproduce. By modifying these four values, we can create incredibly varied effects, ranging from simulations dying out immediately to spreading infinitely. The structure you saw at the beginning of the video was generated using this code, 8919. I love this rule set because of the cave-like internal structures it creates. The thing that's incredible and beautiful to me about this is how simple the rules are that we use to generate the structure. A structure with seeming intentionality and complexity. Some rule sets even have one or more gliders, just like regular Conway's Game of Life. You may also notice that 5766 has a glider that looks very similar to regular Conway's glider. Conventional Conway's Game of Life follows a 2333 rule set, which we can actually recreate in our 3D Game of Life by constraining two of the axes using, say, barriers. If you haven't watched my other video on this topic yet, I'd highly recommend watching it now, since a lot of the math in this video will make more sense if you've seen it. This project ended up being a lot more effort than I initially anticipated. For one, to get the kind of performance I wanted out of it, I had to massively rewrite my initial system. Doing this proved harder than expected, and I ran into quite a few bugs. Some of these were pretty funny, but others were quite annoying. Secondly, I ran into a lot of problems with how Minecraft loads chunks. However, I overcame both of these problems and ended up with a result I'm more than happy with. Let's talk about how I did that. Expanding my 2D logic from last video into three dimensions was the easy part. In fact, the changes we have to make for the logic are quite small. Instead of checking just eight neighbor positions, we check 26, as shown here. We also need to make sure we modify our Conroy's rules to fit whatever numbers we plug in. This will use the four numbers from earlier. In this example, I use the numbers 5766. Six, six. Regular Conway's Game of Life uses 2333, which is what I explained in my other video.
One major change I made in this version of the code was moving all of the code to the live cells function. This means the dead cells are running no code at all. This makes moving the logic to other blocks incredibly easy. I did this by having all living cells check their neighbors to see if they should become a living cell and then adding them to a list that's stored within the block itself. Then on the living cells update phase, it simply sets those blocks to the new living cell. Since we're no longer running code inside of the dead cells, we can also do things like this, where we allow the living cells to eat the dead cells. I love this example in particular, because the organism almost looks like a storm cloud that's eating this village. What I've shown in this video today is only the tip of the iceberg on what's possible with this. This can be taken in so many different directions, ranging from changing these four values to create different results, to completely changing what blocks are affected and how they're affected. I wonder if there's a set of values that creates more interesting cavern structures, or even having multiple blocks follow the rule set and seeing how they interact. If you have any ideas for things you want me to try, please let me know in the comments. If I get enough comments asking me to do things, I'll probably make a follow-up video trying out all your ideas. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know in the comments as well, as these videos take a lot of work to make, but they're incredibly rewarding. Thank you so much for watching, and have a great rest of your day.